Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions, please? Mr. President. Please. We've heard from several of your Republican colleagues, including Senator Tom Tillis, asking for Congress to reconvene so that more federal funding can be brought to Western North Carolina. Do you expect to ask your colleagues to return to Congress? Well, I would be in favor of it, yeah. This is a very unusual situation, and I would be in favor of it. Now, you know, in theory, they're supposed to have it, but they spent a lot of money on bringing illegal migrants, people that came into our country illegally, and taking them in, and all of the money they've spent, numbers that nobody can even believe. So they don't have any money for the people that live here. They got hit by one of the worst storms, possibly the worst storm ever, but one of the worst storms in the history of our country. And it's a shame, because they should have the money. They spent money that I don't believe they're supposed to be spending for that, as you know. So I think it's a disgrace what happened with FEMA, what's happened with their rescue effort. Their rescue effort was almost non-existent. And by the way, I want to thank a man who was really incredible. When I came here, close to here, but not — I couldn't come here because it was not the appropriate thing, as I told you. But uh, I got to know a couple of people from North Carolina, officials that were terrific, doing a very good job, very much involved. And they said, do you, do you know Elon Musk? I said, I happen to know the gentleman. What's your problem? Uh, do you think you could get Starlink? I said, what is Starlink? Explain to me. That was communication. Because, as you know, your communication — I see the poles all ripped down all over. Uh, you had almost no communication here. And I said, so what do you need? He said, we need Starlink, and we can't get it. There's nobody that knows anything about how to get it. So I called Elon, and literally, uh, actually, a strange, before I hung up, they called that man that I spoke to. I said, Elon, I just asked you, and we're still on the phone. How'd you do that? So he did — I don't think he wanted to tell me, but it was pretty amazing. And he got it here really in, in record time. There, there were some delays that shouldn't have happened uh, on behalf of the federal government, but that was straightened out. But he had Starlink here. And your communications went from non-existent to probably almost better than what it was before. And uh, so I want to thank Elon Musk for having done a great job. He, he took care of a very important need. Probably saved — Ted probably saved a lot of lives, because this was really an emergency. And you had it — you had it here, like, almost instantly. It's very hard to get, too. It's been pretty popular and very hard to get. Thank you. Right. I know that your county is really resilient. Are you satisfied with everything this state is doing the election boards to help these people get to the ballot box? Well, I'm not hearing the good things about the governor here like I'm hearing about the governor in Georgia, as an example. I'm hearing the governor in Georgia has done a very good job, and I, I don't really know the governor here, but I'm not hearing that he's done a very good job. So that's the only thing I can say. And certainly, uh, you have all heard the same stories that we all hear, that FEMA has done a very poor job. Our FEMA, when we had a problem, we, we did record uh, rescues. And we, what the job that FEMA did under uh, the Trump administration was really incredible. But uh, they had spent, in all fairness to FEMA, they had spent hundreds of millions of dollars doing other things, things that I don't think bear any relationship to this money. There was — they were not supposed to be spending the money on taking in illegal migrants, maybe so they could vote in the election, because that's — a lot of people are saying that's why they're doing it. I don't know. I hope that's not why they're doing it. So uh, they really didn't have any money. They don't have very much money. And now they're saying, uh, can we have a special vote? Let's have a special session. Uh, I'm in favor of that, but somebody has to get back to why did they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on something that they were not supposed to be spending it on. Okay. Look, voting is the least of it right now. They got to vote. They want to vote because it's very important. But they have to survive. That's why I can't believe the early voting. I mean, the early voting is records. I can't — you know, when they told me that, I was shocked. I got a call from Michael Watley. He said, sir, you're not going to believe this, but they're setting records in North Carolina voting. And it's just that they're great people. I mean, they lost their house and they're standing outside voting. So 
obviously, we want them to vote, but we want them to live and survive and be happy and healthy, because this is really a tragedy. It's really something. Yeah. Mr. President, to that point, is there any concern or specific reasoning that you have to believe at this point in time, as we can say, that the results of the election in North Carolina will not be credible or legitimate? No, I think in a way it's the opposite. I mean, we're so impressed. And uh, I think they have a pretty good system here. And Michael Watley was responsible to a certain extent. And the new people that took Michael's place, I think, I, I have not heard any complaints about that. I mean, the, the amazing thing is they've come from nobody even knows. Everybody knows them. And it was like they have no home. They stayed in the woods. And I heard cases where they're staying in the woods because they wanted to vote. And then they voted. And then they went wherever they went. And they're going to come back, hopefully, and rebuild. And hopefully, I'll be the one that helps them rebuild. And we'll help them. But no, these are incredible people. I incredible spirit and heart. Very few people. I mean, who would do that? It's a great state. Can really you great. Maybe help people. I don't know if it helped. I, I I don't even like to think about it. That I mean, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. But the fact that they'd come out and vote in record numbers is pretty amazing to me. Mr. President. Yes. If you could speak directly to those voters who lost everything and then went to the polls and voted, what would you say? Well, the first thing I'd say is, we love you. Because that's really something special, really. For them to do that, I was surprised. I figured we'd have 50 percent, 30 percent of the vote. We had record votes compared to the last elections, last presidential elections even. Uh, but compared to any election, we, and you know, you're reporting on it also. I think you were probably surprised like I was. But uh, I would just say you're special people. These are special people. These are people with heart. These are people that love your state. They love our country. Very special people. I was, I was, I would have been, I mean, honestly, I would have been happy if they, if we had 50 percent, how can it be possible? And these tend to be Trump areas. I mean, not to get too political, but they tend to be very Trump areas. And uh, that the people would come out like that, I think it's a great sign. It's a great sign. Well, I've seen some pretty bad devastation. I've seen, uh, I've seen the tornado devastations, and they're pretty. Incredible. Uh, this is much more spread out, but you would see a, a line like it was cut by a razor blade of a tornado that went through an area, and it was literally a foot left, it was perfect, and a foot right, it was down to dirt, big trees ripped out and thrown, you know, miles away, the power of the tornado. So I've seen that, but that was a much narrower thing, but you certainly didn't want to be in the way of it. I've seen trailer parks where they were they weren't even they were there and very nice and they were literally there wasn't a thing left. The pipes were ripped out of the ground. So I've seen some pretty bad ones. I've seen some really bad ones, yeah. Uh, one second please. Well, climate change, you know, we want, as I say, we want crystal clear, beautiful water and we want clean air. And we had that during the Trump administration, but we also had the best job numbers in the history of our country. We weren't losing jobs. We want in terms of climate change, because when you look at the rest of the world and you look at China and you look at the fact that they spent no money on climate change, I mean, John Kerry goes over and he speaks to President Xi and they yes him, yes him, yes him, and then laugh at him as he leaves and they do what they're doing. We spend a lot of money in this country. You know, we have to, it's a double, it's a double entendre. But you know what? I'll tell you what. Uh, we had the best, the cleanest air on record and we had the cleanest water on record. And that's very important. And we also had the best economy in the history of our country. So we had everything going well. And uh, yeah, so I'm very much into that, but I really focus on the uh, water and the air. Very important. Yes, ma'am, please. Independent voters? Oh, undecided? Well, it's hard to believe you have undecided voters. I do hear about them, but you possibly do. But uh, I think, look, if you believe in what's happening with the polls, 
if you believe in what's happened, they have a new phenomenon now, the we'll call them the betting polls. I don't know if people are gambling on them. I don't, can't imagine that's a proper thing to do, but perhaps they are. But one of them uh, just came out, I guess the big one, at, we're 63 to 33, something like that. Uh, that's a pretty big margin. I don't know if they know what they're doing. I have no idea who they are, but it's a very big poll. They quote it all the time on television. And we're at 63, and uh, they're in the 30s, meaning they, meaning her. But I don't think she's qualified to be running. I really don't. And I think she is a threat to democracy, our democracy, the way they took it away from Biden. And I'm not a fan of Biden, but remember this. He got 14 million votes. She got no votes. And she was, in fact, the first one to quit out of 22 people. And she's running. So, you know, you would call that probably a threat to democracy. But uh, it, we seem to be doing very well in, in the polls. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yes. Well, I've gone 52 days without a day off, which all of these people would respect, but they do it the same because they're just like, we're called workers, right? We're workers. For better or worse, we're workers. I don't know if it's the best thing. We didn't, we didn't have to be. A lot of them didn't have to be. I didn't have to be. I could have been on a beautiful beach, but I'd much rather be right here with you because we're going to turn the country around. Beyond the area, we're going to turn the whole country around. Uh, Look, my message is that I've uh, been uh, going full blast. Yesterday, you saw that. We had uh, early in the morning till late in the evening. We left the football game. We went to a McDonald's yesterday. That was quite a stop. That was quite a stop. We had thousands and thousands. They had 25,000 people around circling the, uh, the building. I wouldn't say that Secret Service was thrilled, but that's the way it is. It was, uh, it was a love fest, though. It was incredible. And uh, it just, it did take off. It take, took off. And then we did two more stops. We did a, uh, we did a town hall, big town hall, with Sage and some people, and it was very successful. But no, the McDonald's stop was very unique. There's no question about that. They really, uh, they really, I'm sure McDonald's liked it, but it was, it just took off. You know, you never know about life, and you never know what's good, what's bad. You do something, it's going to be great, it's okay and you do something that's supposed to be okay. This was supposed to be a routine stop, and it turned into a monster. But it was a beautiful monster. There was a lot of love. I'll be doing the same thing. I'm going to be uh, campaigning. Uh, I have no days off, so I'll be going into the 60s or 70s uh, in terms of no days off. I don't want a day off. We have to win. Uh, we have to win. We have to save our country, and we have to just make America great again. That's a message, and it's a simple message. And Everybody behind me believes in it just as strongly as I do. I know every one of these people, either through uh, who they are or what they do, I know every one of them. They're hardworking people, they're great people, and they love our country and the state. Okay, maybe one or two more. Yes, please. Please. I can't hear you. You have to speak louder. There were already plans to get Starlet. Well, they didn't get it, because all I know is a top official who was working, who happens to be a Republican, was very concerned that they didn't have any communication, and they weren't able to get Starlink. And I called Elon, who endorsed me, who gave me one of the most beautiful endorsements of anybody, frankly. And uh, he was, uh, you know, he's celebrating the launch and the landing of the most incredible landing of a rocket that I've ever seen. I called him up. I said, is that your rocket? Yep. I said, can Russia do that? Nope. And they won't be able to for a lot of years. And I said, what about China? Nope, they can't do it. What about the USA outside of you? No, they can't do it either. No, he's a unique character. I'll tell you, he's great. He's great. A lot of spirit, a lot of, and he's a, certainly a brilliant guy. And we're lucky. But in this case, the Starlink, I've learned a lot about it. It's incredible. You don't need the wires. You don't need digging. You don't need anything. It goes right up to a satellite and comes right back down. And he did a fantastic job. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they were trying, but certainly he didn't know about it. Nobody knew about it. And, you know, obviously they weren't able to get it. Mr. President, yeah. President Trump, a armed gunman was arrested and charged with making threats against FEMA workers two Saturdays ago. FEMA had a safety stand down because of continued uh, incredible threats. 
Is it helping the recovery effort in North Carolina to keep making these claims that FEMA is not doing their job? Well, I think you have to let people know how they're doing. If they were doing a great job, I think we should say that, too, because I think they should be rewarded. But if they're not doing, does that mean that if they're doing a poor job, we're supposed to not say it? These people are entitled to say it. And these are honest people behind this. If FEMA were doing well, they would be saying they did a good job. They're not, for the most part, political people. For the most part, they're not political people. But uh, you've obviously seen nothing but uh, you know, very bad statements coming out about the job that FEMA and this administration has done having to do with this area, North Carolina as a whole. And by the way, other states also, they're also complaining. But look, a lot of the money is gone. They don't have any money. They have to have, they have, to have a meeting in Washington, a special meeting in Washington to get money. It's all gone. They've spent it on illegal migrants. Many of them are murderers. Many of them are drug dealers. Many of them come out of mental institutions and insane asylums. And many of them are terrorists. And they spent money to bring these people into our country. And they don't have money to take care of the people from North Carolina and other states. So, you know, I think you have to be able to speak. Does that mean let's not talk about it? Because by doing that, they'll do a better job the next time. It's very important. Yeah, one more question. Chairman, since Chairman Watley is here, have you, two weeks after the election, have either of you seen any cheating incidents of cheating that leads you to believe that this election will not be fair? Well, I haven't. Unfortunately, I know the other side, and they are not good. But I have not seen. Have, Michael, have you seen anything that looks suspicious? Or, we're very early in the process. Yeah, we're, we're very early in the process, and we're tracking across all 50 states right now uh, to make sure that the systems that we want to have in place are in place, and uh, we're very happy with the initial results. How likely are you to win North Carolina? Let me ask you, do you think I'll win North Carolina? You'll win. Yeah. <laughs> You'll I win. think so. I think, I think we're going to do good, and we have Lara. So, you know, Lara is a, a fantastic person, an unbelievably smart person, works with works with Michael and everybody else, Egg knows everybody here, and she loves this state. They named their daughter Carolina. So that's a pretty good, that's off to, but she's fantastic. So Laura is here, and uh, she's here in the state right now, working in another part of the state. Uh, but she loves this place, and she's got a big voice. She's got a big voice, a very smart person, very good person. Uh, I want to thank everybody. We're going to another section, as you know, of North Carolina. We're going to do two more. And uh, so maybe we'll see you then. But I want to just thank all of the people behind me. They want to get back to work. And uh, thank you all very much. Thank Great. You, thank you. Beautiful words. Thank you.